section eight of the pilgrimage of etheria by etheria this librivox recording is in the public domain antioch to mesopotamia the crossing of the euphrates then setting out from antioch to mesopotamia in the name of christ our god i journeyed through certain stations and cities of the province of sile syria which is antioch and entering the borders of the province of augusta fratensis i came to the city of gerapolis which is the metropolis of augusto fratensis and as this city is very beautiful and rich and abounds in everything it was necessary for me to make a halt there for the borders of mesopotamia were not far distant then starting from hierapolis i came in the name of god at the fifteenth milestone to the river euphrates of which it is very well written that it is the great river euphrates it is huge and as it were terrible for it flows down with a current like the river rhone only the euphrates is still greater and as we had to cross in ships and in large ships only i waited there until after midday and then in the name of god i crossed the river euphrates and entered the borders of mesopotamia in syria edessa then journeying through certain stations i came to a city whose name we read recorded in the scriptures batanis which city exists to-day it has a church with a truly holy bishop both monk and confessor and certain martyr memorials the city has a teeming population and the soldiery with their tribune are stationed there departing thence we arrived at edessa in the name of christ our god and on our arrival we straightway repaired to the church and memorial of st thomas there according to custom prayers were made and the other things that were customary in the holy places were done we read also some things concerning st thomas himself the church there is very great very beautiful and of new construction well worthy to be the house of god and as there was much that i desired to see it was necessary for me to make a three days stay there thus i saw in that city many memorials together with holy monks some dwelling at the memorials while others had their cells in more secluded spots farther from the city moreover the holy bishop of the city a truly devout man both monk and confessor received me willingly and said as i see daughter that for the sake of devotion you have undertaken so great a labour in coming to these places from far distant lands if you are willing we will show you all the places that are pleasant to the sight of christians then first thanking god i besought the bishop much that he would deign to do as he said he thereupon led me first to the palace of king abgar where he showed me a great marble statue of him very much like him as they said having a sheen as if made of pearl from the face of abgar it seemed that he was a very wise and honourable man then the holy bishop said to me behold king abgar who before he saw the lord believed in him that he was in truth the son of god there was another statue near made of the same marble which he said was that of his son magnus this also had something gracious in the face then we entered the inner part of the palace and there were fountains full of fish such as i never saw before of so great size so bright and of so good a flavour were they the city has no water at all other than that which comes out of the palace which is like a great silver river the story of king abgarus then the holy bishop told me about the water saying at some time after that king abgar had written to the lord and the lord had answered king abgar by ananias the courier as it is written in the letter itself when some time had passed the persians came against the city and surrounded it and straightway abgar bearing the letter of the lord to the gate with all of his army prayed publicly and he said o lord jesus thou hast promised us that none of our enemies should enter this city and lo the persians now attack us 
and when the king had said this holding the open letter in his uplifted hands suddenly there came a great darkness outside the city before the eyes of the persians as they were approaching the city at a distance of about three miles and they were so baffled by the darkness that they could hardly form their camp and surround the whole city about three miles off so baffled were the persians that they could never afterwards see the way to enter the city but they surrounded it and shut it in with their hostile forces at a distance of about three miles for several months then when they saw that they could by no means enter they wished to slay those within the city by thirst now that little hill which you see my daughter over against the city supplied it with water at that time and the persians perceiving this diverted the water from the city and made it to run near that place where they had made their camp and on that day and at that hour when the persians diverted the water the fountains which you see in this place burst forth at once at god's bidding and by the favour of god they remain here from that day to this but the water which the persians had diverted was dried up at that hour so that they who were besieging the city had nothing to drink for even one day which thing is plain to the present time for no moisture of any sort has ever been seen there from that day to this so at god's bidding who had promised that this should come to pass they were obliged to return to their own home in persia moreover afterwards as often as enemies determined to come and take the city this letter was brought out and read in the gate and straightway all enemies were driven back by the will of god the holy bishop also told me that the place where these fountains broke forth had previously been open ground within the city lying under the palace of king abgar which same palace had been situated on somewhat higher ground as was plainly visible for the custom was at that time that whenever palaces were built they should always stand on higher ground but after that these fountains had burst forth here then apgar built this palace for his son magnus whose statue i saw near that of his father so that the fountain should be included in the palace and when the holy bishop had told me all these things he said to me let us now go to the gate by which ananias the courier entered with the letter of which i spoke so when we had come to the gate the bishop standing made a prayer and read us the letters then after he had blessed us another prayer was made moreover the holy man told us that from the day on which ananias the courier entered it with the letter of the lord the gate is kept to this day that no one who is unclean nor any mourner should pass through nor should any dead body be borne out through it the holy bishop also showed us the memorial of abgar and of his whole family very beautiful but made in the ancient style he took us also to the palace which king abgar had at first on the higher ground and if there were any other places he showed them to us it was very pleasant to me to receive from the holy man himself the letters of apgar to the lord and of the lord to apgar which the holy bishop had read to us there for although i have copies at home yet it seemed to me more pleasant to receive them from him lest perhaps something less might have reached us at home and indeed that which i received here is fuller so if jesus our god bids it and i come home you too shall read them ladies my own souls Sharay, haran then after three days spent there it was necessary for me to go still farther to Sharay, as it is now called in holy scripture it is called sharon where holy abraham dwelt as it is written in genesis when the lord said unto abram get thee out of thy country and from thy father's house and go to sharon and the rest and when i arrived at Sharay, i went straightway to the church which is within the city and soon i saw the bishop of the place a truly holy man of god both monk and confessor who deigned to show us all the places there that we desired he took us at once to the church which is without the city on the spot where stood the house of holy abraham it stands on the same foundations and it is made of the same stone as the holy bishop said when we had come to the church prayer was made the passage from genesis was read 
one psalm was said and after a second prayer the bishop blessed us and we came out then he deigned to take us to the well whence the holy rebecca used to fetch the water and the holy bishop said to us behold the well whence holy rebecca watered the camels of holy abraham's servant eleazar thus he deigned to show us each thing now at the church which is outside the city as i said ladies reverend sisters where abraham's house was originally there is now the martyr memorial of a certain holy monk named helpidius it happened very pleasantly for us that we arrived on the day before the martyr's feast of st helpidius which is on the twenty-third of april on that day it was of obligation that all the monks from all parts and from all the borders of mesopotamia should come down to charay even the greater ones who dwelt in solitude whom they call ascetics for this day is observed with great dignity there on account of the memorial of holy abraham whose house stood where the church now is in which the body of the holy martyr is laid so it happened to us very pleasantly beyond our expectations that we should see these holy monks of mesopotamia truly men of god as well as those whose good report and manner of life had reached men's ears far and wide whom i thought that i could not by any means see not because it was impossible for god to give me this who had deigned to give me all things but because i had heard that they never came down from their dwellings except on easter day and on this day for they are men who do many wonders and moreover i did not know in what month was the day of the martyrs feast which i have mentioned but at god's bidding it came about that i arrived on the day that i had not hoped for we stayed there two days for the memorial day and for the sake of seeing these holy men who deigned to receive me very willingly for the sake of salutation and to speak with me of which i was not worthy nor were they seen there after the memorial day for they sought the desert without delay in the night each one returning to his own cell in that city i found scarcely a single christian excepting a few clergy and holy monks if any such dwell in the city all are heathen and in like manner as we gazed with great reverence at the place where the house of holy abraham was at first for the sake of his memorial so do those heathen gaze with great reverence at a place about a mile from the city where are the memorials of nahor and bethuel and since the bishop of that city is very learned in the scriptures i asked him saying i beg of you my lord to tell me that which i desire to hear and he said tell me daughter what you wish and i will tell it you if i know it then i said i know by the scriptures that holy abraham came to this place with his father terah and with sarah his wife and with lot his brother's son but i have not read when nahor and bethuel came here i know only that afterwards abraham's servant came to shereh that he might seek rebekah the daughter of bethuel the son of nahor for isaac the son of his master abraham then the holy bishop said to me truly daughter it is written as you say in genesis that holy abraham came here with his relatives but canonical scripture does not say when nahor and his relatives and bethuel came here but it is plain that they did come here afterwards since their memorials are here at about a mile from the city the scripture does indeed relate how holy abraham's servant came here to take holy rebecca and how holy jacob came here when he took to himself the daughters of laban the syrian then i asked where was the well where holy jacob watered the flocks which rachel the daughter of laban the syrian was feeding the bishop said to me the place is six miles hence near the village which then was the farm of laban the syrian and if you wish to go there we will go with you and show it to you there are also many very holy monks and ascetics and a holy church i also asked the holy bishop where was that place of the chaldees where tira lived at first with his family and the holy bishop said to me the place daughter of which you ask is at the tenth station hence as you go into persia 
there are five stations from here to nisibis and five stations thence to hur which was a city of the chaldees but there is now no access for romans for the persians hold the whole country this district is specially called the eastern it is on the borders of the romans the persians and the chaldees and many other things he deigned to tell me as did also the other holy bishops and holy monks but all they told us was from the scriptures of god or of the acts of holy men that is of monks either the wonderful things that those already departed had done or what those who are still in the body do daily at any rate those who are ascetics for i would not that your affection should think that the monks ever told me any other stories except from the scriptures of god or else those of the acts of the great monks rachel's well the return to antioch now after two days which i spent there the bishop took us to the well where holy jacob had watered holy rachel's flocks the well is six miles from cherry and in its honour a very great and beautiful holy church has been built hard by when we had come to the well prayer was made by the bishop the passage from genesis was read one psalm suitable to the place was said and after a second prayer the bishop blessed us we saw also lying on a spot near the well that very great stone which holy jacob had moved away from the well and which is shown to-day no one dwells there around the well except the clergy of the church which is there and the monks who have their cells near at hand whose truly unheard-of mode of life the bishop described to us then after prayer had been made in the church i visited in company with the bishop the holy monks in their cells giving thanks both to god and to them who deigned with willing mind to receive me in their cells wherever i entered and to address me in such words as were fitting to proceed out of their mouth they deigned also to give me and all who were with me eulogiae such as is the custom for monks to give those whom they receive with willing mind into their cells and the place being in a large plain a great village over against us was pointed out to me by the holy bishop about five hundred paces from the well through which village our route lay this village as the bishop said was once the farm of laban the syrian and is called fadana in the village the memorial of laban the syrian jacob's father-in-law was shown to me the place was also shown to me where rachel stole her father's images so having seen everything in the name of god and bidding farewell to the holy bishop and the holy monks who had deigned to conduct us to the place we returned by the route and by the stations through which we had come from antioch antioch to tarsus when i had gone back to antioch i stayed there for a week while the things that were necessary for our journey were being prepared then starting from antioch and journeying through several stations i came to the province called cilicia which has tarsus for its metropolis i had already been at tarsus on my way to jerusalem but as the memorial of st thecla is at the third station from tarsus in hisaria it was very pleasant for me to go there especially as it was so very near at hand visit to st thecla's church return to constantinople so setting out from tarsus i came to a certain city on the sea still in cilicia which is called pompeiopolis thence i entered the borders of hisaria and stayed in a city called coricus and on the third day i arrived at a city which is called seleucia in hisaria on my arrival i went to the bishop a truly holy man formerly a monk and in that city i saw a very beautiful church and as the distance thence to st thecla which is situated outside the city on a low eminence was about fifteen hundred paces i chose rather to go there in order to make the stay that i intended there is nothing at the holy church in that place except numberless cells of men and of women i found there a very dear friend of mine to whose manner of life all in the east bore testimony a holy deaconess named marthana whom i had known at jerusalem whither she had come for the sake of prayer 
she was ruling over the cells of apotactite and virgins and when she had seen me how can i describe the extent of her joy or of mine but to return to the matter at hand there are very many cells on the hill and in the midst of it a great wall which encloses the church containing the very beautiful memorial the wall was built to guard the church because of the hisari who are very malicious and who frequently commit acts of robbery to prevent them from making an attempt on the monastery which is established there when i had arrived in the name of god prayer was made at the memorial and the whole of the acts of st thecla having been read i gave endless thanks to christ our god who deigned to fulfil my desires in all things unworthy and undeserving as i am then after a stay of two days when i had seen the holy monks and apothectidae who were there both men and women and when i had prayed and made my communion i returned to tarsus and to my journey from tarsus after a halt of three days i set out on my journey in the name of god and arriving on the same day at a station called mansocrine which is under mount taurus i stayed there on the next day going under mount taurus and travelling by the route that was already known to me through each province that i had traversed on my way out to wit cappadocia galatia and bithynia i arrived at chalcedon where i stayed for the sake of the very famous martyr memorial of st euphemia which was already known to me from a former time on the next day crossing the sea i arrived at constantinople giving thanks to christ our god who deigned to give me such grace unworthing and undeserving as i am for he had deigned to give me not only the will to go but also the power of walking through the places that i desired and of returning at last to constantinople when i had arrived there i went through all the churches that of the apostles and all the martyr memorials of which there are very many and i ceased not to give thanks to jesus our god who had thus deigned to bestow his mercy upon me from which place ladies light of my eyes while i send these letters to your affection i have already purposed in the name of christ our god to go to ephesus in asia for the sake of prayer because of the memorial of the holy and blessed apostle john and if after this i am yet in the body and am able to see any other places i will either tell it to your affection in person if god deigns to permit me this or in otherwise if i have another project in mind i will send you news of it in a letter but do you ladies light of my eyes deign to remember me whether i am in the body or out of the body End of section eight. section nine of the pilgrimage of etheria by etheria this librivox recording is in the public domain jerusalem one daily offices one matins now that your affection may know what is the order of service operatio day by day in the holy places i must inform you for i know that you would willingly have this knowledge every day before cock-crow all the doors of the anastasis are opened and all the monks and virgins as they call them here go thither and not they alone but lay people also both men and women who desire to begin their vigil early and from that hour to daybreak hymns are said and psalms are sung responsively responditur and antiphons in like manner and prayer is made after each of the hymns for priests deacons and monks in twos or threes take it in turn every day to say prayers after each of the hymns or antiphons but when day breaks they begin to say the matin hymns thereupon the bishop arrives with the clergy and immediately enters into the cave and from within the rails canceli, he first says a prayer for all mentioning the names of those whom he wishes to commemorate he then blesses the catechumens afterwards he says a prayer and blesses the faithful and when the bishop comes out from within the rails every one approaches his hand and he blesses them one by one as he goes out and the dismissal takes place by daylight two sext and known 
in like manner at the sixth hour all go again to the anastasis and psalms and antiphons are said while the bishop is being summoned then he comes as before not taking his seat but he enters at once within the rails in the anastasis that is in the cave just as in the early morning and as then he again first says a prayer then he blesses the faithful and as he comes out from within the rails every one approaches his hand and the same is done at the ninth hour as at the sixth three vespers now at the tenth hour which they call here lichinicon or as we say lucinaria all the people assemble at the anastasis in the same manner and all the candles and tapers are lit making a very great light now the light is not introduced from without but it is brought forth from within the cave that is from within the rails where a lamp is always burning day and night and the vesper psalms and antiphons are said lasting for a considerable time then the bishop is summoned and he comes and takes a raised seat and likewise the priests sit in their proper places and hymns and antiphons are said and when all these have been recited according to custom the bishop rises and stands before the rails that is before the cave and one of the deacons makes the customary commemoration of individuals one by one and as the deacon pronounces each name the many little boys who are always standing by answer with countless voices kyrie eleison or as we say miserere domine and when the deacon has finished all that he has to say first the bishop says a prayer and prays for all then they all pray both the faithful and catechumens together again the deacon raises his voice bidding each catechumen to bow his head where he stands and the bishop stands and says the blessing over the catechumens again prayer is made and again the deacon raises his voice and bids the faithful each where he stands to bow the head and the bishop likewise blesses the faithful thus the dismissal takes place at the anastasis and one by one all draw near to the bishop's hand afterwards the bishop is conducted from the anastasis to the cross with hymns all the people accompanying him and when he arrives he first says a prayer then he blesses the catechumens then another prayer is said and he blesses the faithful thereupon both the bishop and the whole multitude further proceed behind the cross where all that was done before the cross is repeated and they approach the hand of the bishop behind the cross as they did at the anastasis and before the cross moreover there are hanging everywhere a vast number of great glass chandeliers and there are also a vast number of seriophala before the anastasis before the cross and behind the cross for the whole does not end until darkness has set in this is the order of daily services operatio at the cross and at the anastasis throughout the six days two sunday offices one vigil but on the seventh day that is on the lord's day the whole multitude assembles before cockcrow in as great numbers as the place can hold as at easter in the basilica which is near the anastasis but outside the doors where lights are hanging for the purpose and for fear that they should not be there at cockcrow they come beforehand and sit down there hymns as well as antiphons are said and prayers are made between the several hymns and antiphons for at the vigils there are always both priests and deacons ready there for the assembling of the multitude the custom being that the holy places are not opened before cock crow now as soon as the first cock has crowed the bishop arrives and enters the cave at the anastasis all the doors are opened and the whole multitude enters the anastasis where countless lights are already burning and when the people have entered one of the priests says a psalm to which all respond and afterwards prayer is made then one of the deacons says a psalm and prayer is again made a third psalm is said by one of the clergy prayer is made for the third time and there is a commemoration of all 
after these three psalms and three prayers are ended lo censers are brought into the cave of the anastasis so that the whole basilica of the anastasis is filled with odours and then the bishop standing within the rails takes the book of the gospel and proceeding to the door himself reads the narrative of the resurrection of the lord and when the reading is begun there is so great a moaning and groaning among all with so many tears that the hardest of heart might be moved to tears for that the lord had borne such things for us after the reading of the gospel the bishop goes out and is accompanied to the cross by all the people with hymns there again a psalm is said and prayer is made after which he blesses the faithful and the dismissal takes place and as he comes out all approach to his hand and forthwith the bishop betakes himself to his house and from that hour all the monks return to the anastasis where psalms and antiphons with prayer after each psalm or antiphon are said until daylight the priests and deacons also keep watch in turn daily at the anastasis with the people but of the lay people whether men or women those who are so minded remain in the place until daybreak and those who are not return to their houses and betake themselves to sleep two morning services now at daybreak because it is the lord's day every one proceeds to the greater church built by constantine which is situated in golgotha behind the cross where all things are done which are customary everywhere on the lord's day but the custom here is that of all the priests who take their seats as many as are willing preach and after them all the bishop preaches and these sermons are always on the lord's day in order that the people may always be instructed in the scriptures and in the love of god the delivery of these sermons greatly delays the dismissal from the church so that the dismissal does not take place before the fourth or perhaps the fifth hour but when the dismissal from the church is made in the manner that is customary everywhere the monks accompany the bishop with hymns from the church to the anastasis and as he approaches with hymns all the doors of the basilica of the anastasis are opened and the people that is the faithful enter but not the catechumens and after the people the bishop enters and goes at once within the rails of the cave of the martyrium thanks are first given to god then prayer is made for all after which the deacon bids all bow their heads where they stand and the bishop standing within the inner rails blesses them and goes out each one drawing near to his hand as he makes his exit thus the dismissal is delayed until nearly the fifth or sixth hour and in like manner it is done at lutinaria according to daily custom this then is the custom observed every day throughout the whole year except on solemn days to the keeping of which we will refer later on but among all things it is a special feature that they arrange that suitable psalms and antiphons are said on every occasion both those said by night or in the morning as well as those throughout the day at the sixth hour the ninth hour or at lucanaria all being so appropriate and so reasonable as to bear on the matter in hand and they proceed to the greater church which was built by constantine and which is situated in golgotha that is behind the cross on every lord's day throughout the year except on the one sunday of pentecost when they proceed to zion as you will find mentioned below but even then they go to zion before the third hour the dismissal having been first made in the greater church dot 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 a leaf is wanting three festivals at epiphany one night station at bethlehem dot 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 blessed is he that cometh in the name of the lord and the rest which follows and since for the sake of the monks who go on foot it is necessary to walk slowly the arrival in jerusalem thus takes place at the hour when one man begins to be able to recognize another that is close upon but a little before daybreak and on arriving there the bishop and all with him immediately enter the anastasis where an exceedingly great number of lights are already burning there a psalm is said 
prayer is made first the catechumens and then the faithful are blessed by the bishop then the bishop retires and every one returns to his lodging to take rest but the monks remain there until daybreak and recite hymns two morning services at jerusalem but after the people have taken rest at the beginning of the second hour they all assemble in the greater church which is in golgotha now it would be superfluous to describe the adornment either of the church or of the anastasis or of the cross or in bethlehem on that day you see there is nothing but gold and gems and silk for if you look at the veils they are made wholly of silk striped with gold and if you look at the curtains they too are made wholly of silk striped with gold the church vessels too of every kind gold and jewelled are brought out on that day and indeed who could either reckon or describe the number and weight of the seriophala or of the sentinelle or of the lucianaire or of the various vessels and what shall i say of the decoration of the fabric itself which constantine at his mother's instigation decorated with gold mosaic and costly marbles as far as the resources of his kingdom allowed him that is the greater church as well as the anastasis at the cross and the other holy places in jerusalem but to return to the matter in hand the dismissal takes place on the first day in the greater church which is in golgotha and when they preach or read the several lessons or recite hymns all are appropriate to the day and afterwards when the dismissal from the church has been made they repair to the anastasis with hymns according to custom so that the dismissal takes place about the sixth hour and on this day lucanaria also takes place according to daily use three octave of the festival on the second day also they proceed in like manner to the church in golgotha and also on the third day thus the feast is celebrated with all this joyfulness for three days up to the sixth hour in the church built by constantine on the fourth day it is celebrated in like manner with similar festal array in eleona the very beautiful church which stands on the mount of olives on the fifth day in the lazarium which is distant about one thousand five hundred paces from jerusalem on the sixth day in zion on the seventh day in the anastasis and on the eighth day at the cross thus then is the feast celebrated with all this joyfulness and festal array throughout the eight days in all the holy places which i have mentioned above and in bethlehem also throughout the entire eight days the feast is celebrated with similar festal array and joyfulness daily by the priests and by all the clergy there and by the monks who are appointed in that place for from the hour when all return by night to jerusalem with the bishop the monks of that place keep vigil in the church in bethlehem reciting hymns and antiphons but it is necessary that the bishop should always keep these days in jerusalem and immense crowds not of monks only but also of the laity both men and women flock together to jerusalem from every quarter for the solemn and joyous observance of that day Four the presentation mass the fortieth day after the epiphany is undoubtedly celebrated here with the very highest honour for on that day there is a procession in which all take part in the anastasis and all things are done in their order with the greatest joy just as at easter all the priests and after them the bishop preach always taking for their subject that part of the gospel where joseph and mary brought the lord into the temple on the fortieth day and simeon and anna the prophetess the daughter of phanuel saw him treating of the words which they spake when they saw the lord and of that offering which his parents made and when everything that is customary has been done in order the sacrament is celebrated and the dismissal takes place for lent and when the paschal days come they are observed thus just as with us forty days are kept before easter so here eight weeks are kept before easter and eight weeks are kept because there is no fasting on the lord's days nor on the sabbaths except on the one sabbath on which the vigil of easter falls in which case the fast is obligatory 
with the exception then of that one day there is never fasting on any sabbath here throughout the year thus deducting the eight lord's days and the seven sabbaths for on the one sabbath as i said above the fast is obligatory from the eight weeks there remain forty-one fast days which they call here eote that is quadragesima one service on sundays now the several days of the several weeks are kept thus on the lord's day after the first cock-crow the bishop reads in the anastasis the account of the lord's resurrection from the gospel as on all lord's days throughout the whole year and everything is done at the anastasis and at the cross as on all lord's days throughout the year up to daybreak afterwards in the morning they proceed to the greater church called the martyrium which is in golgotha behind the cross and all things that are customary on the lord's day are done there in like manner also when the dismissal from the church has been made they go with hymns to the anastasis as they always do on the lord's day and while these things are being done the fifth hour is reached lucanaria however takes place at its own hour as usual at the anastasis and at the cross and in the various holy places on the lord's day the ninth hour is kept two weekday services on the second weekday they go at the first cockcrow to the anastasis as they do throughout the year and everything that is usual is done until morning then at the third hour they go to the anastasis and the things are done that are customary throughout the year at the sixth hour for this going at the third hour in quadragesima is additional at the sixth and ninth hours also and at lucanaria everything is done that is customary throughout the whole year at the holy places and on the third weekday all things are done as on the second weekday three wednesday and friday again on the fourth weekday they go by night to the anastasis and all the usual things are done until morning and also at the third and sixth hours but at the ninth hour they go to zion as is customary at that hour on the fourth and sixth weekdays throughout the year for the reason that the fast is always kept here on the fourth and sixth weekdays even by the catechumens except a martyr's day should occur for if a martyr's day should chance to occur on the fourth or on the sixth weekday in quadragesima they do not go to zion at the ninth hour but on the days of quadragesima as i said above they proceed to zion on the fourth weekday at the ninth hour according to the custom of the whole year and all things that are customary at the ninth hour are done except the oblation for in order that the people may always be instructed in the law both the bishop and the priest preach diligently but when the dismissal has been made the people escort the bishop with hymns thence to the anastasis so that it is already the hour of lucanaria when he enters the anastasis then hymns and antiphons are said prayers are made and the service misa of lucanaria takes place in the anastasis and at the cross and the service of lucanaria is always later on those days in quadragesima than on other days throughout the year on the fifth weekday everything is done as on the second and third weekday on the sixth weekday everything is done as on the fourth including the going to zion at the ninth hour and the escorting of the bishop thence to the anastasis with hymns four saturday but on the sixth weekday the vigils are observed in the anastasis from the hour of their arrival from zion with hymns until morning that is from the hour of lucanaria when they entered to the morning of the next day that is the sabbath and the oblation is made in the anastasis the earlier that the dismissal may take place before sunrise throughout the whole night psalms are said responsibly in turn with antiphons and with various lections the whole lasting until morning and the dismissal which takes place on the sabbath at the anastasis is before sunrise that is the oblation so that the dismissal may take place in the anastasis at the hour when the sun begins to rise 
thus then is each week of quadragesima kept the dismissal taking place earlier on the sabbath i e before sunrise as i said in order that the hebdomarii as they are called here may finish their fast earlier for the custom of the fast in quadragesima is that the dismissal on the lord's day is at the fifth hour in order that they whom they call the hebdomadarii that is they who keep the week's fast may take food and when these have taken breakfast on the lord's day they do not eat until the sabbath morning after they have communicated in the anastasis it is for their sake then that they may finish their fast the sooner that the dismissal on the sabbath at the anastasis is before sunrise for their sake the dismissal is in the morning as i said not that they alone communicate but all who are so minded communicate on that day in the anastasis five the fast this is the custom of the fast in quadragesima some when they have eaten after the dismissal on the lord's day that is about the fifth or sixth hour do not eat throughout the whole week until after the dismissal at the anastasis on the sabbath these are they who keep the week's fast nor after having eaten in the morning do they eat in the evening of the sabbath but they take a meal on the next day that is on the lord's day after the dismissal from the church at the fifth hour or later and then they do not breakfast until the sabbath comes round as i have said above for the custom here is that all who are apotoxidae as they call them here whether men or women eat only once a day on the day when they do eat not only in quadragesima but throughout the whole year but if any of the apotocity cannot keep the entire week of fasting as described above they take supper in the middle of the week on the fifth day all through quadragesima and if any one cannot do even this he keeps two days fast in the week all through quadragesima and they who cannot do even this take a meal every evening for no one exacts from any how much he should do but each does what he can nor is he praised who has done much nor is he blamed who has done less that is the custom here for their food during the days of quadragesima is as follows they taste neither bread which cannot be weighed nor oil nor anything that grows on trees but only water and a little gruel made of flour quadragesima is kept thus as we have said and at the end of the week's fast the vigil is kept in the anastasis from the hour of lucanarii on the sixth weekday when the people come with psalms from zion to the morning of the sabbath when the oblation is made in the anastasis and the second third fourth fifth and sixth weeks in quadragesima are kept as the first end of section nine section ten of the pilgrimage of etheria by etheria this librivox recording is in the public domain five holy week and the festivals at easter one saturday before palm sunday station at bethany now when the seventh week has come that is when two weeks including the seventh are left before easter everything is done on each day as in the weeks that are past except that the vigils of the sixth weekday which are kept in the anastasis during the first six weeks are in the seventh week kept in zion and with the same customs that obtained during the six weeks in the anastasis for throughout the whole vigil psalms and antiphons are said appropriate both to the place and to the day and when the morning of the sabbath begins to dawn the bishop offers the oblation and at the dismissal the archdeacon lifts his voice and says let us all be ready to-day at the seventh hour in the lazarium and so as the seventh hour approaches all go to the lazarium that is bethany situated at about the second milestone from the city and as they go from jerusalem to the lazarium there is about five hundred paces from the latter place a church in the street on that spot where mary the sister of lazarus met with the lord 
here when the bishop arrives all the monks meet him and the people enter the church and one hymn and one antiphon are said and that passage is read in the gospel where the sister of lazarus meets the lord then after prayer has been made and when all have been blessed they go thence with hymns to the lazarium and on arriving at the lazarium so great a multitude assembles that not only the place itself but also the fields around are full of people hymns and antiphons suitable to the day and to the place are said and likewise all the lessons are read then before the dismissal notice is given of easter that is the priest ascends to the higher place and reads the passage that is written in the gospel when jesus six days after the passover had come to bethany and the rest so that passage having been read and notice given of easter the dismissal is made this is done on that day because as it is written in the gospel these events took place in bethany six days before the passover there being six days from the sabbath to the fifth week day on which after supper the lord was taken by night then all return to the city direct to the anastasis and lucanaria takes place according to custom two palm sunday a services in the churches on the next day that is the lord's day which begins the paschal week and which they call here the great week when all the customary services from cock-crow until morning have taken place in the anastasis and at the cross they proceed on the morning of the lord's day according to custom to the greater church which is called the martyrium it is called the martyrium because it is in golgotha behind the cross where the lord suffered when all that is customary has been observed in the great church and before the dismissal is made the archdeacon lifts his voice and says first throughout the whole week beginning from to-morrow let us all assemble in the martyrium that is in the great church at the ninth hour then he lifts his voice again saying let us all be ready to-day at eliona at the seventh hour so when the dismissal has been made in the great church that is the martyrium the bishop is escorted with hymns to the anastasis and after all things that are customary on the lord's day have been done there after the dismissal from the martyrium every one hastens home to eat that all may be ready at the beginning of the seventh hour in the church in iliona on the mount of olives where is the cave in which the lord was wont to teach b procession with palms on the mount of olives accordingly at the seventh hour all the people go up to the mount of olives that is to iliona and the bishop with them to the church where hymns and antiphons suitable to the day and to the place are said and lessons in like manner and when the ninth hour approaches they go up with hymns to the embonmon that is to the place whence the lord ascended into heaven and there they sit down for all the people are always bidden to sit when the bishop is present the deacons alone always stand hymns and antiphons suitable to the day and to the place are said interspersed with lections and prayers and as the eleventh hour approaches the passage from the gospel is read where the children carrying branches and palms met the lord saying blessed is he that cometh in the name of the lord and the bishop immediately rises and all the people with him and they all go on foot from the top of the mount of olives all the people going before him with hymns and antiphons answering one to another blessed is he that cometh in the name of the lord and all the children in the neighborhood even those who are too young to walk are carried by their parents on their shoulders all of them bearing branches some of palms and some of olives and thus the bishop is escorted in the same manner as the lord was of old for all even those of rank both matrons and men accompany the bishop all the way on foot in this manner making these responses from the top of the mount to the city and thence through the whole city to the anastasis going very slowly lest the people should be wearied and thus they arrive at the anastasis at a late hour and on arriving although it is late lucanaria takes place with prayer at the cross after which the people are dismissed three monday and holy week 
on the next day the second weekday everything that is customary is done from the first cock-crow until morning in the anastasis also at the third and sixth hours everything is done that is customary throughout the whole of quadragesima but at the ninth hour all assemble in the great church that is the martyrium where hymns and antiphons are said continuously until the first hour of the night and lessons suitable to the day and the place are read interspersed always with prayers lucanaria takes place when the hour approaches that is so that it is already night when the dismissal at the martyrium is made when the dismissal has been made the bishop is escorted thence with hymns to the anastasis where when he has entered one hymn is said followed by a prayer the catechumens and then the faithful are blessed and the dismissal is made four tuesday in holy week on the third weekday everything is done as on the second with this one thing added that late at night after the dismissal of the martyrium and after the going to the anastasis and after the dismissal there all proceed at that hour by night to the church which is on the mount eliona and when they have arrived at that church the bishop enters the cave where the lord was wont to teach his disciples and after receiving the book of the gospel he stands and himself reads the words of the lord which are written in the gospel according to matthew where he says take heed that no man deceive you and the bishop reads through the whole of that discourse and when he has read it prayer is made the catechumens and the faithful are blessed the dismissal is made and every one returns from the mount to his house it being already very late at night five wednesday in holy week on the fourth week day everything is done as on the second and third week days throughout the whole day from the first cock-crow onwards but after the dismissal has taken place at the martyrium by night and the bishop has been escorted with hymns to the anastasis he at once enters the cave which is in the anastasis and stands within the rails but the priest stands before the rails and receives the gospel and reads the passage where judas iscariot went to the jews and stated what they should give him that he should betray the lord and when the passage has been read there is such a moaning and groaning of all the people that no one can help being moved to tears at that hour afterwards prayer follows then the blessing first of the catechumens and then of the faithful and the dismissal is made six monday thursday a mass celebrated twice on the fifth weekday everything that is customary is done from the first cock-crow until morning at the anastasis and also at the third and at the sixth hours but at the eighth hour all the people gather together at the martyrium according to custom only earlier than on other days because the dismissal must be made sooner then when the people are gathered together all that should be done is done and the oblation is made on that day at the martyrium the dismissal taking place about the tenth hour but before the dismissal is made there the archdeacon raises his voice and says let us all assemble at the first hour of the night in the church which is in ediona for great toil awaits us to-day in this very night then after the dismissal at the martyrium they arrive behind the cross where only one hymn is said and prayer is made and the bishop offers the oblation there and all communicate nor is the oblation ever offered behind the cross on any day throughout the year except on this one day and after the dismissal there they go to the anastasis where prayer is made the catechumens and the faithful are blessed according to custom and the dismissal is made b night station on the mount of olives and so every one hastens back to his house to eat because immediately after they have eaten all go to eliona to the church wherein is the cave where the lord was with his disciples on this very day there then until about the fifth hour of the night hymns and antiphons suitable to the day and to the place are said lessons too are read in like manner with prayers interspersed and the passages from the gospel are read where the lord addressed his disciples on that same day as he sat in the same cave which is in that church 
and they go thence at about the sixth hour of the night with hymns up to the imbomon the place whence the lord ascended into heaven where again lessons are read hymns and antiphons suitable to the day are said and all the prayers which are made by the bishop are also suitable both to the day and to the place c stations at gethsemane and at the first cockcrow they come down from the imbomon with hymns and arrive at the place where the lord prayed as it is written in the gospel and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and prayed and the rest there is in that place a graceful church the bishop and all the people enter a prayer suitable to the place and to the day is said with one suitable hymn and the passage from the gospel is read where he said to his disciples watch that ye enter not into temptation the whole passage is read through and prayer is made and then all even to the smallest child go down with the bishop on foot with hymns to gethsemane where on account of the great number of people in the crowd who are wearied owing to the vigils and weak through the daily fast and because they have so great a hill to descend they come very slowly with hymns to gethsemane and over two hundred church candles are made ready to give light to all the people on their arrival at gethsemane first a suitable prayer is made then a hymn is said then the passage of the gospel is read where the lord was taken and when this passage has been read there is so great a moaning and groaning of all the people together with weeping that their lamentation may be heard perhaps as far as the city d return to jerusalem from that hour they go with hymns to the city on foot reaching the gate about the time when one man begins to be able to recognize another and thence right on through the midst of the city all to a man both great and small rich and poor all are ready there for on that special day not a soul withdraws from the vigils until morning thus the bishop is escorted from gethsemane to the gate and thence through the whole of the city to the cross seven good friday a service at daybreak and when they arrive before the cross the daylight is already growing bright there the passage from the gospel is read where the lord is brought before pilate with everything that is written concerning that which pilate spake to the lord or to the jews the whole is read and afterwards the bishop addresses the people comforting them for that they have toiled all night and are about to toil through that same day bidding them not be weary but to have hope in god who will for that toil give them a great reward and encouraging them as he was able he addresses them thus go now each one of you to your houses and sit down a while and all of you be ready here just before the second hour of the day that from that hour to the sixth you may be able to behold the holy wood of the cross each one of us believing that it will be profitable to his salvation then from the sixth hour we must all assemble again in this place that is before the cross that we may apply ourselves to lections and to prayers until night b the column of the flagellation after this when the dismissal at the cross has been made that is before the sun rises they all go at once with fervour to zion to pray at the column at which the lord was scourged and returning thence they sit for a while in their houses and presently all are ready c veneration of the cross then a chair is placed for the bishop in golgotha behind the cross which is now standing the bishop duly takes his seat in the chair and a table covered with a linen cloth is placed before him the deacons stand round the table and a silver gilt casket is brought in which is the holy wood of the cross the casket is opened and the wood is taken out and both the wood of the cross and the title are placed upon the table now when it has been put upon the table the bishop as he sits holds the extremities of the sacred wood firmly in his hands while the deacons who stand around guard it it is guarded thus because the custom is that the people both faithful and catechumens come one by one and bowing down at the table kiss the sacred wood and pass through and because uh, i know not when 
some one is said to have bitten off and stolen a portion of the sacred wood it is thus guarded by the deacons who stand around lest any one approaching should venture to do so again and as all the people pass by one by one all bowing themselves they touch the cross and the title first with their foreheads and then with their eyes then they kiss the cross and pass through but none lays his hand upon it to touch it when they have kissed the cross and have passed through a deacon stands holding the ring of solomon and the horn from which the kings were anointed they kiss the horn also and gaze at the ring all the people are passing through up to the sixth hour entering by one door and going out by another for this is done in the same place where on the preceding day that is on the fifth weekday the oblation was offered d station before the cross the three hours and when the sixth hour has come they go before the cross whether it be in rain or in heat the place being open to the air as it were a court of great size and of some beauty between the cross and the anastasis here all the people assemble in such great numbers that there is no thoroughfare the chair is placed for the bishop before the cross and from the sixth to the ninth hour nothing else is done but the reading of lessons which are read thus first from the psalms wherever the passion is spoken of then from the apostle either from the epistles of the apostles or from their acts wherever they have spoken of the lord's passion then the passages from the gospels where he suffered are read then the readings from the prophets where they foretold that the lord should suffer then from the gospels where he mentions his passion thus from the sixth to the ninth hours the lessons are so read and the hymns said that it may be shown to all the people that whatsoever the prophets foretold of the lord's passion is proved from the gospels and from the writings of the apostles to have been fulfilled and so through all those three hours the people are taught that nothing was done which had not been foretold and that nothing was foretold which was not wholly fulfilled prayers also suitable to the day are interspersed throughout the emotion shown and the mourning by all the people at every lesson and prayer is wonderful for there is none either great or small who on that day during those three hours does not lament more than can be conceived that the lord hath suffered those things for us afterwards at the beginning of the ninth hour there is read that passage from the gospel according to john where he gave up the ghost this read prayer and the dismissal follow e evening offices and when the dismissal before the cross has been made all things are done in the greater church at the martyrium which are customary during this week from the ninth hour when the assembly takes place in the martyrium until late and after the dismissal at the martyrium they go to the anastasis where when they arrive the passage from the gospel is read where joseph begged the body of the lord from pilate and laid it in a new sepulchre and this reading ended a prayer is said the catechumens are blessed and the dismissal is made but on that day no announcement is made of a vigil at the anastasis because it is known that the people are tired nevertheless it is the custom to watch there so all of the people who are willing or rather who are able keep watch and they who are unable do not watch there until the morning those of the clergy however who are strong or young keep vigil there and hymns and antiphons are said throughout the whole night until morning a very great crowd also keep night-long watch some from the late hour and some from midnight as they are able eight vigil of easter now on the next day the sabbath everything that is customary is done at the third hour and also at the sixth the service at the ninth hour however is not held on the sabbath but the paschal vigils are prepared in the great church the martyrium the paschal vigils are kept as with us with this one addition that the children when they have been baptized and clothed and when they issue from the font are led with the bishop first to the anastasis the bishop enters the rails of the anastasis and one hymn is said 
then the bishop says a prayer for them and then he goes with them to the greater church where according to custom all the people are keeping watch everything is done there that is customary with us also and after the oblation has been made the dismissal takes place after the dismissal of the vigils has been made in the greater church they go at once with hymns to the anastasis where the passage from the gospel about the resurrection is read prayer is made and the bishop again makes the oblation but everything is done quickly on account of the people that they should not be delayed any longer and so the people are dismissed the dismissal of the vigils takes place on that day at the same hour as with us nine services in the easter octave moreover the paschal days are kept up to a late hour as with us and the dismissals take place in their order throughout the eight paschal days as is the custom everywhere at easter throughout the octave but the adornment of the churches and the order of the services here are the same throughout the octave of easter as they are during epiphany in the greater church in the anastasis at the cross at eleona in bethlehem as well as in the lazarium in fact everywhere because these are the paschal days on the first lord's day they proceed to the great church that is the martyrium as well as on the second and third weekdays but always so that after the dismissal has been made at the martyrium they go to the anastasis with hymns on the fourth weekday they proceed to eleona on the fifth to the anastasis on the sixth to zion on the sabbath before the cross but on the lord's day that is on the octave they proceed to the great church again that is to the martyrium moreover on the eight paschal days the bishop goes every day after breakfast up to eleona with all the clergy and with all the children who have been baptized and with all who are apotoxity both men and women and likewise with all the people who are willing hymns are said and prayers are made both in the church which is on eleona wherein is the cave where jesus was wont to teach his disciples and also in the embomon that is in the place whence the lord ascended into heaven and when the psalms have been said and prayer has been made they come down thence with hymns to the anastasis at the hour of lucanaria this is done throughout all the eight days ten vesper station at zion on easter sunday now on the lord's day at easter after the dismissal of lucanaria that is at the anastasis all the people escort the bishop with hymns to zion and on arriving hymns suitable to the day and place are said prayer is made and the passage from the gospel is read where the lord on the same day and in the same place where the church now stands in zion came in to his disciples when the doors were shut that is when one of his disciples thomas was absent and when he returned and the other apostles told him that they had seen the lord he said except i shall see i will not believe when this has been read prayer is again made the catechumens and the faithful are blessed and every one returns to his house late about the second hour of the night eleven sunday after easter again on the octave of easter that is on the lord's day all the people go up to eleona with the bishop immediately after the sixth hour first they sit for a while in the church which is there and hymns and antiphons suitable to the day and to the place are said prayers suitable to the day and to the place are likewise made then they go up to the embomon with hymns and the same things are done there as in the former place and when the time comes all the people and all the apotactity escort the bishop with hymns down to the anastasis arriving there at the usual hour for lucanaria so lucanaria takes place at the anastasis and at the cross and all the people to a man escort the bishop thence with hymns to zion and when they have arrived hymns suitable to the day and to the place are said there also and lastly that passage from the gospel is read where on the octave of easter the lord came in where the disciples were and reproved thomas because he had been unbelieving the whole of that lesson is read with prayer afterwards both the catechumens and the faithful are blessed 
and every one returns to his house as usual just as on the lord's day of easter at the second hour of the night twelve easter to whitsuntide now from easter to the fiftieth day that is to pentecost no one fasts here not even those who are apotactity during those days as throughout the whole year the customary things are done at the anastasis from the first cockcrow until morning and at the sixth hour and at lucanaria likewise but on the lord's days the procession is always to the martyrium that is to the great church according to custom and they go thence with hymns to the anastasis on the fourth and sixth week days as no one fasts during those days the procession is to zion but in the morning the dismissal is made in its due order thirteen the ascension festival at bethlehem on the fortieth day after easter that is on the fifth weekday for all go on the previous day that is on the fourth weekday after the sixth hour to bethlehem to celebrate the vigils for the vigils are kept in bethlehem in the church wherein is the cave where the lord was born on this fifth weekday the fortieth day after easter the dismissal is celebrated in its due order so that the priests and the bishop preach treating of the things suitable to the day and the place and afterwards every one returns to jerusalem late end of section ten section eleven of the pilgrimage of etheria by etheria this librivox recording is in the public domain six festivals of whitsuntide one whit sunday a morning stations but on the fiftieth day that is the lord's day when the people have a very great deal to go through everything that is customary is done from the first cockcrow onwards vigil is kept in the anastasis and the bishop reads the passage from the gospel that is always read on the lord's day namely the account of the lord's resurrection and afterwards everything customary is done in the anastasis just as throughout the whole year but when morning is come all the people proceed to the great church that is to the martyrium and all things usual are done there the priests preach and then the bishop and all things that are prescribed are done the oblation being made as is customary on the lord's day only the same dismissal at the martyrium is hastened in order that it may be made before the third hour b station at zion and when the dismissal has been made at the martyrium all the people to a man escort the bishop with hymns to zion so that they are in zion when the third hour is fully come and on their arrival there the passage from the acts of the apostles is read where the spirit came down so that all tongues were heard and all men understood the things that were being spoken and the dismissal takes place afterwards in due course for the priests read there from the acts of the apostles concerning the selfsame thing because that is the place in zion there is another church there now where once after the lord's passion the multitude was gathered together with the apostles and where this was done as we have said above afterwards the dismissal takes place in due course and the oblation is made there then that the people may be dismissed the archdeacon raises his voice and says let us all be ready to-day in eleona in the embomon directly after the sixth hour c station at the mount of olives so all the people return each to his house to rest themselves and immediately after breakfast they ascend the mount of olives that is to eleona each as he can so that there is no christian left in the city who does not go when therefore they have gone up the mount of olives that is to eleona they first enter the embomon that is the place whence the lord ascended into heaven and the bishops and the priests take their seat there and likewise all the people lessons are read there with hymns interspersed antiphons too are said suitable to the day and the place also the prayers which are interspersed have likewise similar references the passage from the gospel is also read where it speaks of the lord's ascension also that from the acts of the apostles which tells of the ascension of the lord into heaven after his resurrection and when this is over the catechumens and then the faithful are blessed 
and they come down thence it being already the ninth hour and go with hymns to that church which is in eliona wherein is the cave where the lord was wont to sit and teach his apostles and as it is already past the tenth hour when they arrive lucanaria takes place there prayer is made and the catechumens and likewise the faithful are blessed d night procession and then all the people to a man descend thence with the bishop saying hymns and antiphons suitable to that day and so come very slowly to the martyrium it is already night when they reach the gate of the city and about two hundred church candles are provided for the use of the people and as it is a great distance from the gate to the great church that is the martyrium they arrive about the second hour of the night for they go the whole way very slowly lest the people should be weary from being afoot and when the great gates are opened which face towards the market-place all the people enter the martyrium with hymns and with the bishop and when they have entered the church hymns are said prayer is made the catechumens and also the faithful are blessed after which they go again with hymns to the anastasis where on their arrival hymns and antiphons are said prayer is made the catechumens and also the faithful are blessed this is likewise done at the cross lastly all the christian people to a man escort the bishop with hymns to zion and when they are come there suitable lessons are read psalms and antiphons are said prayer is made the catechumens and the faithful are blessed and the dismissal takes place and after the dismissal all approach the bishop's hand and then every one returns to his house about midnight thus very great fatigue is endured on that day for vigil is kept at the anastasis from the first cockcrow and there is no pause from that time onward throughout the whole day but the whole celebration of the feast lasts so long that it is midnight when every one returns home after the dismissal has taken place at zion two a resumption of the ordinary services now from the day after the fiftieth day all fast as is customary throughout the whole year each one as he is able except on the sabbath and on the lord's day which are never kept as fasts in this place on the ensuing days everything is done as during the whole year that is vigil is kept in the anastasis from the first cockcrow and if it be the lord's day at the earliest cockcrow the bishop first reads in the anastasis as is customary the passage from the gospel concerning the resurrection which is always read on the lord's day and then afterwards hymns and antiphons are said in the anastasis until daylight but if it be not the lord's day only hymns and antiphons are said in like manner in the anastasis from the first cockcrow until daylight all the apotacity and of the people those who are able attend the clergy go by turns daily the clergy go there at first cockcrow but the bishop always as it begins to dawn that the morning dismissal may be made with all the clergy present except on the lord's day when the bishop has to go at the first cockcrow that he may read the gospel in the anastasis afterwards everything is done as usual in the anastasis until the sixth hour and at the ninth as well as at lucanaria according to the custom of the whole year but on the fourth and sixth weekdays the ninth hour is kept in zion as is customary seven baptism one the inscribing of the competence moreover i must write how they are taught who are baptized at easter now he who gives in his name gives it in on the day before quadragesima and the priest writes down the names of all this is before the eight weeks which i have said are kept here at quadragesima and when the priest has written down the names of all after the next day of quadragesima that is on the day when the eight weeks begin the chair is set for the bishop in the midst of the great church that is at the martyrium and the priests sit in chairs on either side of him while all the clergy stand then one by one the competents are brought up coming if they are males viri with their fathers and if females feminae with their mothers 
then the bishop asks the neighbors of every one who has entered concerning each individual saying does this person lead a good life is he obedient to his parents is he not given to wine nor deceitful making also inquiry about the several vices which are more serious in man and if he has proved him in the presence of witnesses to be blameless in all these matters concerning which he has made inquiry he writes down his name with his own hand but if he is accused in any matter he orders him to go out saying let him amend and when he has amended then let him come to the font lavacrum and as he makes inquiry concerning the men so also does he concerning the women but if any be a stranger he comes not so easily to baptism unless he has testimonials from those who know him two preparation for baptism catechizings this also i must write reverend sisters lest you should think that these things are done without good reason the custom here is that they who come to baptism through these forty days which are kept as fast days are also exorcised by the clergy early in the day as soon as the morning dismissal has been made in the anastasis immediately afterwards the chair is placed for the bishop at the martyrium in the great church and all who are to be baptized sit around near the bishop both men and women their fathers and mothers standing there also besides these all the people who wish to hear come in and sit down the faithful however only for no catechumen enters there when the bishop teaches the others the law beginning from genesis he goes through all the scriptures during those forty days explaining them first literally and then unfolding them spiritually they are also taught about the resurrection and likewise all things concerning the faith during those days and this is called the catechizing three traditio of the creed then when five weeks are completed from the time when their teaching began the competents are then taught the creed and as he explained the meaning of all the scriptures so does he explain the meaning of the creed each article first literally and then spiritually by this means all the faithful in these parts follow the scriptures when they are read in church inasmuch as they are all taught during those forty days from the first to the third hour for the catechizing lasts for three hours and god knows reverend sisters that the voices of the faithful who come in to hear the catechizing are louder in approval of the things spoken and explained by the bishop than they are when he sits and preaches in church then after the dismissal of the catechizing is made it being already the third hour the bishop is at once escorted with hymns to the anastasis so the dismissal takes place at the third hour thus are they taught for three hours a day for seven weeks but in the eighth week of quadragesima which is called the great week there is no time for them to be taught because the things that are described above must be carried out four reditio recitation of the creed and when the seven weeks are past and the paschal week is left which they call here the great week then the bishop comes in the morning into the great church at the martyrium and the chair is placed for him in the apse behind the altar where they come one by one a man with his father and a woman with her mother and recite the creed to the bishop and when they have recited the creed to the bishop he addresses them all and says during these seven weeks you have been taught all the law of the scriptures you have also heard concerning the faith and concerning the resurrection of the flesh and the whole meaning of the creed as far as you were able being yet catechumens but the teachings of the deeper mystery that is of baptism itself you cannot hear being as yet catechumens but lest you should think that anything is done without good reason these when you have been baptized in the name of god you shall hear in the anastasis during the eight paschal days after the dismissal from the church has been made you being as yet catechumens cannot be told the more secret mysteries of god five mystic catechizings but when the days of easter have come during those eight days that is from easter to the octave when the dismissal from the church has been made they go with hymns to the anastasis prayer is said anon the faithful are blessed and the bishop stands leaning against the inner rails 
which are in the cave of the anastasis and explains all things that are done in baptism in that hour no catechumen approaches the anastasis but only the neophytes and the faithful who wish to hear concerning the mysteries enter there and the doors are shut lest any catechumen should draw near and while the bishop discusses and sets forth each point the voices of those who applaud are so loud that they can be heard outside the church and truly the mysteries are so unfolded that there is no one unmoved at the things that he hears to be so explained now forasmuch as in that province some of the people know both greek and syriac while some know greek alone and others only syriac and because the bishop although he knows syriac yet always speaks greek and never syriac there is always a priest standing by who when the bishop speaks greek interprets into syriac that all may understand what is being taught and because all the lessons that are read in the church must be read in greek he always stands by and interprets them into syriac for the people's sake that they may always be edified moreover the latins there who understand neither syriac nor greek in order that they be not disappointed have all things explained to them for there are other brothers and sisters knowing both greek and latin who translate into latin for them but what is above all things very pleasant and admirable here is that the hymns the antiphons and the lessons as well as the prayers which the bishop says always have suitable and fitting references both to the day that is being celebrated and also to the place where the celebration is taking place eight dedication of churches those are called the days of dedication when the holy church which is in golgotha and which they call the martyrium was consecrated to god the holy church also which is at the anastasis that is in the place where the lord rose after his passion was consecrated to god on that day the dedication of these holy churches is therefore celebrated with the highest honour because the cross of the lord was found on this same day and it was so ordained that when the holy churches above mentioned were first consecrated that should be the day when the cross of the lord had been found in order that the whole celebration should be made together with all rejoicing on the selfsame day moreover it appears from the holy scriptures that this is also the day of dedication when holy solomon having finished the house of god which he had built stood before the altar of god and prayed as it is written in the books of the chronicles so when these days of dedication are come they are kept for eight days and people began to assemble from all parts many days before not only monks and apotoxidae from various provinces from mesopotamia and syria from egypt and the thebaid where there are very many monks and from every different place and province for there is none who does not turn his steps to jerusalem on that day for such rejoicing and for such high days but lay people too in like manner both men and women with faithful minds gather together in jerusalem from every province on those days for the sake of the holy day and the bishops even when they have been few are present to the number of forty or fifty in jerusalem on these days and with them come many of their clergy but why should i say more for he who on these days has not been present at so solemn a feast thinks that he has committed a very great sin unless some necessity which keeps a man back from carrying out a good resolution has hindered him now on these days of the dedication the adornment of all the churches is the same as at easter and at epiphany also on each day the procession is made to the several holy places as at easter and at epiphany for on the first and second days it is to the greater church which is called the martyrium on the third day it is to eleona that is the church which is on that mount whence the lord ascended into heaven after his passion and in this church is the cave wherein the lord used to teach his apostles on the mount of olives but on the fourth day dot 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 end of section eleven end of the pilgrimage of etheria by etheria